votes for President of the United States are as follows. Joseph R. Biden, Jr. of the state of Delaware has received 306 votes. Donald J. Trump of the state of Florida has received 232 votes. Ah. The whole number of electors appointed to vote for vice hey, president yeah. of the United States is 500. Bad Mike, you are a bad, bad boy. Jimmy Kimmel Live. This is ridiculous. Back at home. Greetings, my fellow Americans, or at least what's left of us. I'm Jimmy. Thanks for watching. Thank you for joining us. After the aftermath of the mess, our president and his army of imbeciles made of our country. Yesterday was a day we'll probably never forget. We saw Confederate flags being waved in the chamber of the Senate. Pipe bombs were found near the Capitol building. Molotov cocktails, too. The MAGA maggots were urinating in the offices of Congress. The kind of behavior that wouldn't be tolerated at a gathering of the juggalos went on at the direction of our con artist in chief. Congress reconvened last night. They stayed up late to officially certify Joe Biden as our next president, despite objections from a number of despicables in the House and Senate who are still hitching their sad little wagons to Donald Trump. Now, I've been watching the news and these experts keep saying, History will not look back kindly on the politicians who continue with this charade, as if those people care about history. Those people don't even care about climate change. At this rate, we'll be lucky if we even have a history for them to be ashamed of. I've heard a lot of people say a lot over the last 36 hours, but none of them summed this whole thing up better than this unidentified gentleman in Washington who had some very wise words from his stoop. Get the f out of town! <laughs> Give that guy a cabinet position, will you? Last night marked the end of the longtime romance between Donald Trump and his golden Graham Lindsay, who used his time before the Senate last night to issue a very public breakup. I cannot convince people, certain groups, by my words, but I will tell you by my actions, that maybe I, among any, above all others in this body, need to say this. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are lawfully elected and will become the president and the vice president of the United States on January the 20th. Lindsey Graham said he and Trump had a hell of a journey, but enough is enough. And he decided not to give him the final rose. That was something to watch. I want to commend Senator Graham for this courageous act uh, two weeks after he called to try to get the Georgia Secretary of State to change the election results. Now he's appalled. But heroes come in many forms, folks. Last night was Donald Trump's worst nightmare. The vice poodle is off the leash. I would hate to have been Mike Pence's juice box last night. The VP is PO'd. One of his longtime pals in the Senate, Senator Jim Inhofe, said he's never seen Pence as mad as he was yesterday. They say Mike Pence hasn't been this angry since the night they picked Footloose as the in-flight movie on Air Force Two. Today we learned that Pence is even planning to go to Biden's inauguration. Well, yeah, of course he's planning to go to Biden's inauguration. It's one last chance to do what he does best, sit there and stare at the back of a president's head. This rift between Pence and Trump, this is a tough one, and not just for them. A split like this is also very Oco taco for their Fox and Friends. I hope that doesn't taint their relationship because they have been such supporters of one another and been a good team because uh, how Donald can it Trump... Be, how can it be good after that? I'm sure it won't be, but I hope that, you know, I hope the president will be able to forgive him because Mike Pence is such a, a, a stellar individual. Gosh, I hope so, too. I'm, give me a second. I'm going to pray for them. Okay, I'm done. Oh, boy, I really hope the president will forgive him for not breaking the law on his behalf. Unless Pence visits Trump in prison, those two will never see each other again. Mike Pence is headed back to Indiana to take a, a long, hot shower in his swim trunks. The West Wing is in absolute chaos right now. There's said to be anger and consternation among White House staffers who are suddenly appalled by their boss's appalling behavior. Trump was said to be borderline enthusiastic as he watched the violence unfold. I don't know about enthusiastic, but he's definitely borderline. And today, with all this going on, 
With five people dead as a result of the riot he started, including a, a police officer, with impeachment proceedings brewing, with a pandemic raging, with some of his own insiders calling for his head, Donald Trump spent a chunk of his day today awarding the Presidential Medal of Freedom to golfers Gary Player and Annika Sorenstam. And those two idiots showed up to accept them. The resignations are piling up. Transportation Secretary and wife of Mitch McConnell, Elaine Chao, resigned. The Deputy, Deputy National Security Advisor resigned. The First Lady's Chief of Staff, the White House Social Secretary, the Deputy Press Secretary, even Slick Mick Mulvaney is calling it quits. They did not see this coming. They're Nazis. Trump's former Attorney General, Bill Barr, today said, orchestrating a mob to pressure Congress is inexcusable. It's a betrayal of his office and supporters. Usually when there's a Trump betrayal, a porn star gets to pay off her credit card debt that month. Trump's former National Security Advisor, John Bolton, said Trump has blood on his hands. Trump's former Chief of Staff, John Kelly, told Jake Tapper today he thinks they should invoke the 25th Amendment to remove the president from office, which is a sentiment shared by Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois. The president is unfit and the president is unwell and the president must now relinquish control of the executive branch voluntarily or involuntarily. Come on, Adam, he's not unfit, he's just big boned. I love that these people are just now realizing this man is not fit to be president. Have you never seen his Pizza Hut commercials? But the end of this nonsense is near. We have 13 days of Trump to go, possibly less. Nancy Pelosi today said if his cabinet won't give him the boot, the House may have to impeach him again. She and Chuck Schumer tried to get Mike Pence on the phone today to suggest invoking the 25th Amendment. The vice president has to initiate that, but Pence left them on hold for 25 minutes and then refused to pick up. But Trump is definitely shaken. President Evil released a statement in the middle of the night last night that said, even though I totally disagree with the outcome of the election and the facts bear me out, nevertheless, there will be an orderly transition on January 20th. That's reassuring. It's like hearing Godzilla say, don't worry, I'm gonna swim home. Trump was suspended by Twitter. He's blocked by Facebook and Instagram too. He's still on Match.com. Uh, but this is the capper. This is how we know we're gonna have to live in this flat earth society for a while. Some of the wing nuts on the far right are trying to float the idea that the mob who attacked the Capitol building yesterday was infiltrated by members of Antifa. Now there were likely not all Trump supporters and there are some reports that Antifa sympathizers may have been sprinkled throughout the crowd. Some of the people who breached the Capitol today were not Trump supporters. They were masquerading as Trump supporters and in fact were members of the violent terrorist group Antifa. There were some probably some undercover Antifa that dressed as Trump people and, and uh, you know, did some damage to windows. There were some people with ropes. I mean, that's an Antifa tactic. There was some intelligence received prior to today that Antifa was going to try to impersonate Trump supporters and attack the Capitol. Antifa and outside infiltrators could be involved in all of this. It clearly looks like Antifa people to me. We have many credible reports that Antifa was very much involved. Keep in mind, we don't know who all were the instigators in this, um, of these horrible things that happened today. I think a lot of it is the Antifa folks. Oh God, where did she, shut up Sarah Pan. Crawl back in your igloo and seal the hole shut with snow. Here are some of the infiltrators from the left who are masquerading. There's a group of free trade coffee roasters from Portland. These organic quinoa farmers are waiting in line for kombucha. You know, we spent the afternoon doing some research into this, and I have to be honest, there may be something to this theory. In fact, let's take a look at some of the more notable characters from the insurrection, starting with this member of the Flintstones Loyal Order of Water Buffalo. He goes by the name Q Shaman. His real name is Jake Angeli. He's an actor, a voiceover artist, and actually a very talented person. Yeah! Thank you, President Trump! Thank you, Q! America! <laughs> Look out, fella, you might get shot by Don Jr. in that outfit. So he's Antifa. Then there's this guy named Adam Johnson. Uh, he was photographed walking around with the speaker's podium. He lives in Florida, shocker, where he makes furniture. So maybe he was just admiring the woodwork, I don't know. Either way, his disguise is great. You never know he was Antifa. 
This colorful bag of scum is Richard Bigo Barnett. He's the guy who put his feet on Nancy Pelosi's desk and stole her mail. He works uh, with an Antifa cell in Arkansas, very big Antifa in Arkansas. The Washington Post went through his Facebook page. It says he's a Trump supporter and a gun advocate who for months has been railing about the stolen election, complaining about masks, and says he's, quote, not afraid to go out of this world kicking and screaming, covered in someone else's blood. Well, that is a hell of a Tinder profile. Bigo identified himself to a New York Times reporter and proudly showed off what he stole from Pelosi's desk. I left her a note on her desk that says, Nancy Bigo is here, you bitch. Total Black Lives Matter type. Then there's this dude, codenamed Baked Alaska, who broke into a Senate office and then didn't know what to do, so he pretended to talk on the phone. The New York Post says identified him as a well-known white nationalist named Tim GNA. Tim was bright enough to live stream his crime. America first! America first! America first! America first! Uh, let's arrest you first and then America second. Then we have this evil genius who looks like a nine-year-old trying to buy beer. <laughs> this little fellow wore his work ID badge to the insurrection to commit uh, what appears to be a crime. And within hours, he was fired from his job. But I'm sure he can just get his old job making cookies in a tree back soon. And perhaps most interestingly, we have this undercover Antifa who stormed the Capitol shouting. Trump! Yes! We're going in. Derek Evans is in the Capitol. <laughs> it's good to identify yourself during something like that. He is a Trump loyalist seen here last month being sworn in as a newly elected member of West Virginia's House of Delegates. So congratulations, Derek. Looks like you succeeded in overturning an election after all. Your own. So there they are, MAGA Antifa. What are the odds he pardons these animals before he goes out? This is good. There were some light moments. One of the patriots who barged into the Capitol yesterday, got a nice souvenir, a face full of mace, and she didn't seem to understand why. And what happened? You were trying to go inside the yeah, Capitol? Yeah, I, I made it like a foot inside, and they pushed me out, and they maced me. What's your, what's your name? Where are you from? My name is Elizabeth. I'm from Knoxville, Tennessee. And why did you want to go in? <laughs> we're storming the Capitol. It's a revolution. <laughs> yeah, come on, dude. It's a revolution. I like that she wore her piano scarf to the revolution. The president's antics this week remind me of, uh, a lot of people think this is a poem. They're actually song lyrics that uh, Trump read many times on the campaign trail. It's a piece called The Snake. It's about a woman who finds a, a half-frozen snake on the ground. She rescues it, and then it bites her. Trump turned that into a metaphor to warn us about immigrants. Remember that wall he was going to build? Yeah. Anyway, now that we're thankfully coming to the end of all this, the snake, to me, feels like it has uh, an all-new meaning. So I, I read this the other day, and I said, wow, that's really amazing. That's really incredible. And it's uh, the snake lyric. On her way to work one morning, down the path along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor, half-frozen snake. Thank you very much. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Oh, well, she cried, I'll take you in, and I'll take care of you. She stroked his pretty skin, and then she kissed and held him tight. But instead of saying thank you, that snake gave her a vicious bite. I saved you, cried the woman, and you've bit me. Heavens, why? You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Count me out. Enough is enough. Oh, shut up, silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. Does that make sense to anybody? Does that make any sense? Well, we can't say he didn't warn us. Jimmy Kimmel Live! <laughs> this is ridiculous.